Let me first explain how the traditional supply chain works. The standard supply chain for retailers such as Walmart, Target, and Tesco was driven by the retailers' orders placed with suppliers. Deciding what to place on shelves was a significant task for a store that has more than 100,000 different items. A buyer normally sets the assortment plan from quarter to quarter, based on the changes in customer demand due to seasonal events. In order to clear out inventory and to make room for new products for the next season, retailers used a variety of approaches, including price discounts or markdowns. It was estimated that end-of-season markdowns and discounting costs U.S. fashion retailers an average of 30% of revenues. Since the 1990s, retailers had partially offloaded the responsibility for category management to category captains, who are key supplier partners with the capabilities to analyze, review, and plan the assortment recommendations for major product categories. For example, at Walmart, there were 40,000 suppliers, this included just 200 strategic suppliers, such as Procter & Gamble. Retailers provided suppliers with access to sales, inventory, and other data in real time, using online information portals such as Walmart's Retail Link Network. Analysts working for suppliers downloaded and reviewed this data and then brought their recommendations to category buyers, who had the final say over approving these assortment recommendations, called, planograms. It was often challenging for small and medium-sized businesses to sell products to large retailers. As it generally took six to eight months for new products to be added to shelves. Retailers and large suppliers tended to outsource a large portion of their logistics needs, starting at the supplier's factory gates and ending at retailers' distribution centers. They relied on third-party logistics providers and freight forwarders to ensure timely shipping and delivery of goods. In 1994, Amazon's distribution network started with two warehouses in Seattle and Delaware, which Amazon called as fulfillment centers. In 1999, the company opened five more fulfillment centers as well as its first European fulfillment centers. In 2006, Amazon created FBA, a service that managed the fulfillment process for its third-party sellers. In 2013, Amazon had launched an umbrella project, named Dragon Boat, to expand its fulfillment capabilities. This initiative aimed to create a global delivery network to facilitate the movement of goods from China and India, to Amazon DCs in the United States and the United Kingdom. Late deliveries of customer orders reportedly cost Amazon millions of dollars in refunds, and motivated management to embark on plans to build its own last-mile delivery network. So in 2016, Amazon created a venture named, Global Supply Chain by Amazon, that featured Amazon as a global logistics provider, targeting all services, including trucking, freight forwarding, and customer delivery. According to Amazon, it would be a revolutionary system that will automate the entire international supply chain and eliminate much of the legacy waste associated with document handling and freight booking. The typical flow for goods through Amazon's distribution system was as follows. Product from overseas arrived at one of Amazon's inbound sortation centers before being sent to a fulfillment center. Amazon's fulfillment centers were warehouses where product was stored, picked, and shipped. In an effort to control logistics costs, Amazon invested heavily in warehouse automation. It acquired Kiva Systems in 2012 and later renamed it Amazon Robotics. This division designed and installed warehouse automation systems exclusively for Amazon. Amazon started building its truck fleet in 2015 to take increased control over shipments to and between its fulfillment centers and sortation centers. In July 2017, Amazon was also leasing 40 cargo planes as part of its logistics network. Amazon's supply chain management has a strategic fit with its competitive strategy of being the retailer of choice for its customers. 
The combination of multi-tier inventory management, superlative transportation, and highly efficient use of information technology, and its wide network of warehouses are all geared towards aligning its supply chain with its competitive strategy. Traditional retailers purchased goods from manufacturers in bulk and took receipt, in full container loads, at their DCs. In contrast, Amazon's strategy was to control the shipment of goods across the entire supply chain, including procurement, shipment to DCs, and final customer delivery. Amazon had first-party, second-party, and third-party sellers. A first-party seller was a manufacturer that sold products directly to Amazon. Second-party sellers were resellers that bought from brands or manufacturers and then sold the product to Amazon. Lastly, third-party sellers relied on Amazon's marketplace to sell directly to customers. In 2017, more than half of the units sold on Amazon's site were from third-party sellers. Amazon divides its customer segments and follows a price differentiation strategy. The various forms of delivery are one-day delivery, free super saver delivery, first-class delivery, and prime customers delivery. For all these segments, Amazon offers the customers an option of paying more for faster delivery or retains the traditional lead time. Coupled with the inventory outsourcing, the customer segmentation into price-differentiated customers offers the company a nimbleness and agility in the market that changes with dynamic fluctuations in demand. A key aspect of Amazon's supply chain is that it has evolved over the years in response to its growth in the market. For instance, Amazon started off as a bookstore, which acts as an intermediary between the buyers and the sellers and does not stock any product of its own. Gradually, this gave way to holding some items in its own warehouses and at the present, Amazon follows a push-pull strategy wherein the inventory is held in a push strategy, and the shipment of the orders is done in a pull strategy. Of course, even now, Amazon follows pure pull strategies for items that it does not stock. Any discussion on Amazon's supply chain is incomplete without an analysis of its multi-tier inventory system. The first tier is the aggregation in the distribution centers, which ensures that Amazon holds fewer inventories and responds to demand in a dynamic manner. The next tier consists of the partner distribution centers and the wholesalers, wherein, whenever an ordered product is not available in its own distribution centers, Amazon can rely on its partners and wholesalers to supply the customer with the required product. Further, through the use of sophisticated and real-time IT, Amazon is able to leverage efficiencies in its distribution. The third tier consists of the networks of third-party sellers, publishers, vendors, and manufacturers who ensure that Amazon acts as an intermediary that fulfills orders from customers by linking them to this tier. In 2018, Amazon was both a retailer of merchandise and digital content, and an operator of a chain of grocery stores and a chain of bookstores, and it had more than 300 million customers around the world. It contributed about 4% of total U.S. retail sales, and its market share of the e-commerce segment was estimated to be approximately 43%. By comparison, its two closest competitors, eBay and Walmart, had 7.4% and 4.3% of the U.S. e-commerce market, respectively. In addition, Amazon had video streaming and music streaming services and offered cloud computing platform services. Amazon was continually exploring new products, services, and markets. Meanwhile, it was using new technologies and logistics models to exploit opportunities to reduce supply chain costs and improve customer service. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.